Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Gonzalez. Here we go with the new lesson, and this is the last lesson for the unit, and we will finish with quadratic. Okay, today we are doing transformation on parabolas. Okay, first of all, I want you to remember and to know this. This one right here is called the parent function. So every time we'll uh, compare another function, another quadratic function, we're gonna compare it to this one, okay? So remember, you don't need any other value, any other number next to this equation. This automatically makes it a quadratic. So this one is called parent function. Remember that, we're gonna be referring to this as a parent function. So this is the graph of the parent function. So whatever we do now, like I said again, I'm gonna say it one more time, whatever we do now, we have to compare that graph to this one, okay? We're gonna start adding more things to this equation, to this function, and something's gonna happen. So you have to describe that. Now, sometimes if you don't know how to explain it right away, so my recommendation is for you to graph the equation or the function first on the calculator, and see what happens. See what happened to this one when we add something else, okay? So, here we go. Uh, my instruction says, read the instructions, because a lot of you do not read the instructions, especially on the homework, and you end up doing more work than what you're supposed to do. Okay, graph each function, and describe how the graph is different, okay, from the parent function given in the graph. So remember, this is going to be your uh, leader, okay? This is what is going to uh, be the center of the attention for this lesson. Whatever you have to explain, it has to be related to this, okay? So now, if you notice, look, just by me, I know that this is a happy face, all right? Because this one is positive. But now what happened? I just made the value of a, which is one, I just made a negative. So I know myself, because I know the rules, that now that parabola is gonna become a surface, okay? And from the minimum, that's gonna become a maximum, all right? So that's my surface right there. So I'm giving you the values of x, so you can find the values of y, so you can start graphing, all right? So, you know how to do that. You will put that in the calculator, y equals negative x squared, and you're gonna get this following values of y, negative four, negative four. Remember that I always give you the vertex in the center, and it's gonna be negative one, negative one, and that becomes zero. So, so far, you know, also, oh, it's very important for you to know, guys, the parent function, okay, always goes through the origin, always. So the vertex in this case is zero, zero. Now, if you notice here, they have the same vertex. So it's something that you probably have to, you know, write or just consider if they ask you on a multiple choice question, do they maintain the a vertex or the vertex changes? You know, so it all depends what they ask. But in here, the most important thing is that um, it flipped over, okay? But let's graph it. So if I'm gonna graph that, I'm gonna go two to the left, and four down, one, two, three, four, okay? One to the left and one down. And I'm gonna reach my vertex. Then after that, I just made the mirror, the image, all right? Open up, match the next point, open up, match your other point. In this case, you don't need seven points. Five points is more than enough, okay? Because we just wanna see what happened to the shape of the parabola. So in this case, like I told you before, all right? Now you're gonna start describing what happened to the parent function when I made my value of uh, a negative. In this case, okay, like negative one because from positive one becomes a negative one. So if you, down the road, we're gonna see what happened when this number is other number than one, okay? So something else is gonna happen. So for now, I can tell, okay, that the parabola, okay, parabola flipped. 
OK. Flip over. OK. That will be one way to explain it because you see now from this parabola that was open upward, now it's open downward. Now you can also see, OK, they have the same vertex. OK, that doesn't change because the vertex here is 0, 0, and here is 0, 0. And if you also notice, it kept the same shape. Okay. You can also say here, okay, guys, um, I don't know, somebody can say, okay, mister, can I say the parabola reflect over the x-axis? But that's more like geomet uh, geometry explanation, which you're also gonna be seeing that when you, if you go to geometry. But as long as you say it flipped over, we know what flip is, you know, flip means like it turns. So that would be a perfect explanation. Flipped over, keep the vertex and keep the same shape, okay? So that was our first transformation. Let's do our second transformation, okay? All right. Do you guys remember the vertex form, all right, of, um, of the equation? But okay, concentrate. In this one, is not too difficult because you already have give you the table. But if I don't give you the table, all right, you can find the values of X and Y by graphing and using the vertex form. Because if you remember the vertex form, that will give you your vertex. And I'm gonna to explain to you more in details here. Look, I can tell you here, guys, listen, that the vertex is going to be zero comma five. You remember last lesson, all right? This is the Y intercept, remember that, okay? And because I don't have anything in parentheses, so that means that this is K and that's H. So in this case, H is going to be zero. And K is gonna be five, because remember, H always changes, but in this case, because it's zero, it doesn't make any difference because there's no negative zero, all right? So I can tell you that my vertex is zero comma five. Now, if you don't know that, you're gonna put it in the calculator. When you put this in the calculator, oh, I gotta show you something. When you put this in the calculator, look what happened. Uh, this, is, this is the numbers that I get. I'm not gonna waste time because you know how to do that. You put on the calculator, you will get the value of y when x is negative two, which is nine, and when it's negative one, it's six, and that repeats. So you will find this table from the calculator. You all know how to do that. So, um, okay. Look what happened now, all right? Because of this, you don't know what, you don't know because you're not visualizing what happened, okay, to this parabola, to the parent when we add five. But I know that the vertex moves up five minutes, five units. So you can say this, you have two ways to say that, okay. Uh, you can say the parabola moves up five units because this is past remember that the, that the y intercept if that would have been minus so it would have went down five so keep that in mind if the y intercept is positive the parabola goes up if the y intercept is negative the parabola goes down remember that so i know remember that the vertex now is different but that does that's you don't have to explain anymore because if you're telling me that the parabola went up five units that means that the vertex when up, it's not the same vertex, but they have the same shape, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, I'm, we're gonna graph it after, so you can see all this, we're gonna graph all three, but I just wanna explain to you first. So now, we have two transformations. We just made the first term negative, okay? That was the first one. So that flipped it over. Now I add five at the end, that's the value of C or the y-intercept, now look what happened in number three. In number three, the value is inside the parentheses. So here, they're giving me H, but they're not giving me K. That is the vertex form. But I can tell you, I can tell you just by looking at that, that the vertex is going to be three comma zero. Because remember, H always changes. That's only if you remember, you know, the vertex formula that we did the last lesson. So I know my vertex is gonna be three, zero. 
But let's say if I don't know what the vertex is, so what the ver if you don't know what the vertex is, so you're gonna graph this on the calculator and you're gonna find the values of y when x is one, two, five. And because I already did that, that is four, that is four, that is one, that is one, and that's my vertex. So now, oh, I forgot to graph those, so, sorry. So, oh, we're gonna graph right after, so by that, the only thing is happening is, is this. The so expression is going to be okay. The parabola or the vertex, whatever you want to say, the parabola moves to the right. Okay? To the right, three units. Right? Now, when the Value of h is negative, remember, it moves to the right. When the value of h is positive, then it moves to the left. So here it's backwards, okay? Remember, when the value of h is negative, in this case, it moves to the right, because it becomes positive. Now, if that would, would have been positive, it would move to the left, because now the vertex will be negative three, but the positive three. You should remember that. So. So in this case, the parabola moves to the right three units, all right? Okay, so, so let's graph this, then we can graph it in the calculator. Also, okay, also, we keep the same shape. The same shape because so far, all my values of A, the linear coefficient has been one or negative one, okay? Let me just go over that. Negative one, positive one, and positive one. So that's why when we have the same values of A, remains the same. Now in the back, we're gonna do when the values of A are different, so it's gonna change. So let's graph this, so we can graph it on the calculator and see what happened. So let's graph this. So when X is negative two, I'm gonna go up nine. One, two, and I know I have 10 lines here, so I know it's one below the last one. Negative one, six, one to the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, and my vertex, zero, five. Then I just graph my, um, the images, all right? Remember, always opens up. And I'm gonna do my parabola. Now remember, I'm comparing this with the parent function, and I can clearly see, if I go back here, I can clearly see that the parent function goes through zero, zero. Now this one, it just went up five. It went at five and it had the same shapes. So in reality, you know, when you're adding something to the Y values or you're adding something to the X values, uh, I mean axis, I should say, it's just the vertex that is moving. So in here, when X, when we have something at the end, outside the, uh, the vertex form, that means that parabola or the vertex is either going up or down. When you have something inside like this one, it's either go to the left or the right. Always, remember, there's only four directions. Up or down, left or right. All right, so now let's graph that one. So one to the right, four up. One, two, three, four. Two to the right, one over. And my vertex right here. When I get to the vertex, I'm gonna do my image and this my parabola right there. All right, so now what I'm telling you is this. Now, from the parent function, look. The parent function always go through zero, zero. Now what happened? When I graph this one, it just moved to the right three units, okay? So we have done three different uh, transformations, okay, individually, right? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it on the calculator so you can see what happens. So let's say in the homework, if you don't know how to do it, so graph, graph them first, then you can uh, see what's happening. So, okay, so I'm gonna clean my memory. Remember what I said, guys, always clean your memory. Second plus 712, okay, I have to turn it on first. Second plus 712, all 
All right, RAM clear. All right. So the first one, remember what I say, always, when you're gonna graph, always put the parent function on Y1, always, because you know when you graph, the first graph that appears is gonna be the parents, and the other ones will be the kids. If I wanna see it like that, right, the kids. So um, I'm gonna write X square, all right? So there's my parent function right there. If I graph, look, there it is, all right? The same one that is up here, all right? You know what I'm talking about. Now, let's go to Y again, Y equals. Now in Y2, I'm gonna put this one. I'm gonna put negative X square, right? Because that was the first one. I'm gonna graph them all so you can see what happened. So I'm gonna put, remember the negative, when the first term is negative, you use this button right here, this one. Not the minus, all right? I always say that because a lot of you made the same mistake. So negative X square, all right? I just wrote it, looks right there. So look what happened. When I graph, I know the first graph that's gonna come up is gonna be the parent function. And the second one is gonna be the children. So let's graph that. There's the parent and that's the, same, that's the kid. So you can clearly see that the parent function, when I made a negative, it flipped over. So you can write it flipped over or it reflected over the x-axis, all right? And you can see the same shape didn't get bigger, didn't get smaller, and it had the same vertex. So now let's do the second one, okay? That's why it's very important to keep the first one, the parent, and Y1. So I'm gonna go to Y equals. I'm gonna keep my Y1 because that's the parent. So I'm gonna go to the bottom, Y2, and I'm gonna eliminate that to write the other one. I'm gonna do now number two. Number two is X squared plus five. I only add in five, so I'm gonna write X, square plus five. And I'm gonna go to my graph and I'm gonna see what happened. Remember the parents comes first. So I had the parent, now it comes the kid. You can see that it went up five units. So you can answer these questions. If you remember the rules, you don't even have to graph it. But if you don't remember the rules, graph it. Because on the region, they ask you the same question. Lucky you that you don't have to the region this year, unless if you failed the class. So let's do number three. So Y equals, we're gonna keep the parent, we're gonna go down and eliminate the second one. And I'm gonna write now, in parentheses, x minus three squared. So in parentheses is x. Now, yes, now minus three, we're gonna use the subtraction button, not the negative, minus three squared. And let's graph it. That's the mom or the parents. Here comes the kid. You can clearly say that the parent just moved to the right three units. Same shape, okay? Now, so remember, if you don't know how to explain it before graphing, graph it first, then you can explain it. Now let's go in the back and you're gonna see now what happens when the value of age changes. As you can see in the first one, all right, I'm giving you the table, but sometimes, guys, you don't need the table. Like, you can just, in the homework, and I give you the table. So what I'm recommending for you is to find the vertex first. If you notice here, all right, I don't have H, and I don't have K, okay? So here, obviously, I know the vertex is going to be the same, zero, zero. So, okay, only because I know, but if you don't know, you wanna graph that. Now look, the only difference here now that the value of A is greater than one, okay? So A is greater than one. So when that happens, right? Uh, the parabola will shrink. the parabola will shrink, or you can say um, it narrows down, okay? Or you can say, or it narrows, it gets narrow, all right? So many ways to do it. I know that, but you, don't want, you won't see that until you actually graph it. So, 
when I put this in the calculator and I found the values of y, these are my values, 16, 16, 4, and 4. Here, if you notice, you'll know, um, see what happens when I get to the next one. So here, because it's a is 2, so that's what's going to happen. So every time you have a number bigger than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2.5, 1.5, as long as it's greater than five, the 1, you're going to get bigger. It will shrink. So let's grab those. If you notice, you think, oh, 16, I'm not going to have space. So listen, start with the next one, okay? Because I only have 10 lines here. But if I do negative 1, comma 4, that will be 1 to the left and 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the other one is going to be 0, 0. So my image will be right here. So I can definitely tell, don't do a triangle because a lot of you are going to do a triangle. You know, this is a parabola, right? So I figure when it's 2, 16, since here I get up to 10, I'm going to just, you know, go a little outside the box and pretend that 16 is there. Just so I can give it a shape. So here also I'm going to go up to the left one and I'm going to just pretend that 16 is there. All right, and I'm going to do my parabola. You can clearly see that it's getting close, it's, it's closing down in arrows, okay? It's, it's shrinking, okay? You know, when you, when, when you put like a pair of jeans on the dryer, right? It will shrink. So, how am I going to do that? Look, I'm going to go to my calculator. That's what is very important for you guys to put always, okay? Put the parent function in y1. So let me go to the y equals. That the parent right there. I'm going to go to my second one and I'm going to clear that up. And I'm going to just write that. Oh, shoot. Thank God you almost dropped it. So in parentheses, 2x, always write it the way it's given to you guys, square. All right? And look, here comes daddy, mom, and here comes the kid. You can tell it got it got narrow, right? It narrows down, shrink. You know, it's getting smaller. It's closing. It's, it's closing up. All right. So your explanation will be, as I told you, the parabola will shrink or in arrows. But you can also you don't have to, but just in case you also have to notice that the vertex is the same. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna do the other one when um, the value of a is less than one. But to begin with, remember guys, if I wanna look for the vertex, that's h, k. So the vertex here is still gonna be zero, zero. But now what happened? Because this one, okay, this is the value of a, is a fraction, it's less than one. We're not talking about negatives now. We're just talking about a value less than one, like one half, like one fourth, two thirds. I mean, like less than one. Okay, not more than one, because if you do like three halves, that's like one point five. That's already more than one, greater than one. We're talking about less than one, like one eighth or two ninth. You know, I said something that is smaller than one, less than one. So it's going to be the opposite of this. Okay. The parabola gets wider. The parabola gets wider, right? Or um, yeah, that's more than enough. It gets wider because it opens up. You can say it opens up bigger or whatever, but you know it's different than that. So when I find my values of y, which I already did, I get 4, 1, 1, 4, all right? Now, if you notice, I skip numbers there, you know, because sometimes you get decimals and you're not going to get decimals there. So what you do is just make sure you keep, if you have to graph, only keep the positive numbers. Now be careful with your graph. So when it's negative 4, 4 to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 up. One, two, three, four. When it's negative two, it's two left. You have one up, which is right here. Okay. And you have zero, zero. 
Now be careful. In this case, you have to follow those numbers. So here, you're not gonna you're not gonna move to right one. You're gonna move twice, okay? Because you have to see how wide. I mean, how far are from zero to that? You know, to match that the other point. So here it's like we're going. It's like we're going by scale of two. All right. So, but then again, if you don't know how the graph is gonna look like, graph it before you, you you do your explanations. Like I say, I know the explanations before graphing because I know the rules. But if you know the rules, you will graph the parent and you will graph this one. Obviously, also you can say that they have the same vertex. Okay. Different size though, because now remember they got wider. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my, to make sure I'm right, I'm gonna to go to my y equals, I'm gonna keep the parent, I'm gonna go down and eliminate that and just write the other one, all right? So in parentheses, just the way it's given to you, parentheses, one divided by two, x, close parentheses, square. He come the dad, the parents, and he come the daughter or the son. You can clearly see that it opens up. It gets wider, wide, okay, wider, not white, wider, wider. We did. All right, so we basically have done, you know, uh, some kind of work here. So in the homework, you have three like that when you have to graph, okay, and explain. Now, the last, the last one at the back from the homework. And I'm gonna give you a graph, okay? So as you point you to describe something like this. Okay, here I'm gonna give you a graph because it says describe the change from the parent function each graph will have and sketch it. So here we have to graph it. But remember, right? Remember that the parent function, all right, is always x squared. So I'm gonna explain to you how can I describe what's gonna happen without, okay, without graphing, okay? But I have to graph at the end. Look, look at the difference between this one and that one. This one has a y-intercept of three. Here, the y-intercept was zero. Here, okay, I don't have h value. This is the value of a, which is greater than one. So I know because this one is greater than one, I know that the parabola is going to shrink, okay? So, the parabola shrinks or gets smaller or it's closing, it's closing, I don't know. You know, it's a different thing, you know, because it is, it's different, it's a big difference between open up and closing, okay? So because of that, I know the parabola is gonna shrink. And because of this, okay, remember that the y-intercept, I know it's gonna go down three units, okay? So now we're gonna write uh, the parabola moves down three units. Now remember, this is what I'm talking about, okay? I already hit the two things, but remember, here I'm gonna give you the table, but you can find the table or you can find the numbers just by looking at the table on the calculator. If you found your vertex, you know the vertex for this one is gonna be zero comma three. Because remember, this is K, all right? And H should be here, but I don't have an H because there's nothing in parentheses. In order for me to have H, it has to be something like this. Here, I can definitely see H and K. But here I only have K, I don't have H, H. How, can that, how, how will that help me? Because I definitely know that my parabola, my vertex is gonna go here, zero comma three, so zero and three up, one, two, three. I know my vertex is gonna go there. I know it's gonna be happy face because it's positive, it's going to go that way, okay? So, um, how am I gonna find my other points? Just doing this, go to Y equals, Keep your parent function, we're gonna eliminate the second one, and I'm gonna type two x squared plus three. Two x squared plus three. Now remember, those what's gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna graph. That's the parent, 
and here comes the kid. So I can clearly see that it went up three units and it shrink. Okay, it got smaller. It's like closing down instead of opening it up, it's closing, all right? So how am I gonna find the other points? Remember that when you go to the graph table, second graph, you're gonna concentrate on these two because this is your uh, transformation. This is your parent. The parent function always goes on Y1. So the second one will go on Y2. So I'm gonna ignore this and I know that the vertex is gonna be zero, three. And I can clearly see it right here. So I'm gonna graph these two points and I'm just gonna do the image because I know that's my vertex. But if I wanna see the whole table, this is what I will do. Ignore this one, remember. So go in that one until this number be, uh, begins to repeat. So I'm gonna go up and I think right there, you see, 21, 21, 11, 11, 3, 3, and 5, 5. So I already have my table. So I don't need to graph two more points so I can have the reflection. So because the vertex is 0, 3, so what happened? When it's negative 1, what is the value of y? 5. So I'm gonna do that. When it's negative 1, okay, sorry. When it's negative 1, oh, sorry guys. Oh my God, hopefully it's continue recording, please. Yes, it continue recording, I'm sorry. So when it's negative one, one, two, three, four, five. So this is the other one. So I can definitely find the image of that one by moving to the right from my vertex and just matching that up right there. Now, if I continue with the other one, okay, when it's negative two, is negative 11, it's positive 11, okay, negative 2, 11. So I'm gonna go two to the left, all right? And I know there's only 10 lines here, so 11 should be outside the box. Same thing here, I go to the right, and it should be outside the box. And if I do my graph, it's right there. Okay, so now the parent function by applying these transformations, it move up three units and it shrink. Okay, it shrinks down. It gets smaller. It gets it gets narrower. However, you want is right. Now let's look with the last one. Okay, the last one. Remember, on the homework you don't have to graph the last one. Just describe what's gonna happen. Okay, so here I see a few more things than here first I know my vertex I know that it's going to be negative 3 comma negative 2 remember that age always changes but let's say if you're not at the vertex remember what I said in the one before in the one before the sign in the parentheses was negative so the parabola shift or move to the right. But this one, because it's positive, the parabola is gonna shift to the left. Okay, so I have here four things to list first, okay? I know just, forget about the two, I'm talking about the negative sign. I know because it's negative, the happy face that's gonna become sad face. So what you have to say is first, parabola flipped over. Okay, it flipped over because of the negative, all right? Because of the symbol, not because of the two, okay? Now the two, which is the value of A, okay? Which is greater than one, that makes it narrower. It's going to shrink. So now you can say parabola shrinks. Or you can say it narrows, okay? Shrinks, or oh, the parabola, it shrinks or it narrows. Now, because of, that would be because of the two, right? Now, because of this three right here, because of age, what's gonna happen? Parabola moves or shift to the left. Three units. 
and because of the negative 2, which is the y intercept, okay, it moves down. And I guess because I have to graph, I'm going to put here number 4, okay, parabola moves down two units. All right? So I have talk or have mentioned every single uh, thing that affects the parent function, all right? Because of the symbol flipped over, because two is greater than one, it shrinks. If that would be one half or one fourth, it will like opens up or will get wider, right? And this is because it's positive, it moved to the left. If that would have been negative, it will move to the right. And this is negative two, so that moves down because it's negative. If that would have been positive, it will go up. So all of the opposite, remember, up or down, left or right, depend on the symbol. So now if I want to graph that, right, I will start with my vertex, which is negative three, negative two, one, two, three, one, three, it's right here. Now, I know it's going to be a surface and it's going to come out this way. But, you know, if I to find a few more points, what do I have to do? Just go to the calculator, all right, and graph them. So y equals, we keep the parent function, we're going to eliminate that, and I'm just going to write negative, all right, the negative button, not the minus, negative, um, two, parentheses, x, plus 3, close parenthesis, square, minus 2. And if I graph, he comes my parent, and he comes the other one. So you can definitely see that the parabola from the parent flipped over, right? The vertex moved 3 to the left and 2 down. And you can say that I got, it gets narrower, it shrinks, it gets narrower. So that's we'll do it for today remember the homework is going to be for friday because i'm going to post this lesson is going to be for wednesday and thursdays so the homework is going to be for friday all right so please just follow and listen exactly to what i say in the lesson and read the instructions please on the uh, lesson whatever i write because you do more work than what you're supposed to all right so uh, we, this will complete the unit. We're going to start a new unit next week. And I think I have to give you a test on this. So I might post it over the weekend. So you have a nice week and please do your best. Thanks.